Hi everyone, good evening. So today is the fourth drug in our neuropharmacology series that is Ederovant. So this is the second drug that is FDA approved for ALS initially as an IV preparation and very recently as an oral preparation. So let's go into the drug. So first with regard to the mechanism of action. So Ederovant is an anti-oxidant agent. So it dominantly exerts its mechanism of action by being a free radical catcher and specifically is a oxynitrate and by being antioxidant prevents oxidative damage to the cell membrane surface thereby decreasing neuronal cell loss. Now coming to the indication, so it is used for ALS, it is FDA approved for ALS. So initially in 2015 in Japan it was used for initially for acute ischemic stroke. It was initially used for acute ischemic stroke and then after that in 2015 in Japan it was approved for ALS. And then thereafter the IV preparation was FDA approved in 2017 and very recently in 2022 even the oral formulation has been FDA approved. But if you look at most of the studies that had uh, studied Ederobone in ALS, most of the primary efficacy outcomes were the ALS FRS score, the decline in the ALS FRS score. Whereas if you take Rilluzole, it has a uh, mortality benefit but uh, ALS it is predominantly at least in most studies they have studied the decline in the ALS FRS score. So there is a less decline, there is a less decline. ALS FR score in patients who are receiving Ederavone. And as I mentioned earlier, it was initially tried in Japan for acute ischemic stroke. And we have two preparations of Ederavone. One is the intravenous preparation and one is the oral preparation. The intravenous preparation, the commercially available ones are available in 30 milligrams IV preparations. Okay, but remember that the IV dose is 60 milligrams IV OD. And the oral preparation is present as an oral suspension. Okay, it's an oral suspension. Now coming to the dosing. So it is given as a IV infusion. So first let's discuss the IV preparation which is first approved. So the dosing is 60 milligrams IV once daily which is given as a slow infusion at a rate of 1 milligram per minute. So as I mentioned earlier, it is present as 30 milligram vials. So basically you have to take 230 milligram vials. It should be mixed in 200 ml normal saline and it is given as a slow infusion rate of 1 milligram per minute. Now coming to the dosing schedule. So Ederovone is actually given over a period of 6 months, that is 6 cycles. So coming to the first cycle, how it is given is, first we have to give 60 milligrams intravenously once daily, which is given for 14 days, which is given for 14 days, followed by a 14 day drug free period. Okay, so this is the first cycle, 60 milligrams IV OD for 14 days, followed by a 14 day drug free period. Coming to the subsequent cycles, there is a second to the 6th cycle. Here it is given as again 60 milligrams IV OD for however 10 doses. Okay, it is given 10 doses, which is given over a period of 14 days, followed again by a 14 day drug free period. Okay, so first cycle is 60 mg IV OD for 14 doses, followed by a 14 day drug free period, and subsequent cycles is again 60 mg IV OD, but not 14 doses, it is 10 doses given over a period of 14 days, followed by a 14 day drug free period. Okay, so that's what's uh, written here and now coming to the oral dosing. The oral dosing is the same just remember that the dose is different. So it is 60 milligrams for the IV dosage but the oral suspension is actually 105 milligrams. Okay, it is 105 milligrams which is 5 ml of the oral suspension. Same thing, first cycle is given as 14 days followed by 14 day drug free period. First cycle and second to sixth cycle is given as 10 doses followed by a 14 day drug free period. But the timing of the dosage of the oral preparation is very important. It has to be given on an empty stomach. And if the patient has had a high fat meal for dinner, it has to be given after 8 hours overnight fast. And if the patient had a low fat meal for dinner, it has to be given over 4 hour overnight fast. Now coming to the adverse drug reaction. So I think uh, most, most of you are already working in neurology, must have been uh, using, uh, must be using Etrovan very commonly. And most of us assume it is very safe. Uh, but that's not always the case. There are a few uh, important adverse drug reactions that we should note. And the most important one is hypersensitivity reactions. So this could be local hypersensitivity in the form of redness, wheels or utericaria. And in some cases it can be systemic hypersensitivity in the form of severe anaphylaxis. It can also cause some coagulopathy, predominantly mucocutaneous bleeds. And this can take the form of bruising and contusions and predominantly injection site contusions. Okay. And in some cases it can cause gait disturbance and it can also cause headache. Other skin reactions like dermatitis, eczema and fungal skin infections. And in rarely it can also cause hypoxia and type 1 respiratory failure. Remember that ALS per se causes type 2 respiratory failure, but Ederovone can cause hypoxia and 
type 1 respiratory failure and very rarely it can cause glycosuria and port site infections. Now coming to the contraindications. So the absolute contraindication is prior hypersensitivity to edrovone and please exert caution in patients who have documented sulfite allergy and patients who are asthmatics. This is because of the bisulfite. This is because of the bisulfite component in the IV edrovone preparation. Okay, so this bisulfate component, uh, component uh, is present. So please use it in caution in patients who are pre-existing sulfate allergy and this can trigger severe asthma attacks in patients who are known asthmatics. So coming to the pharmacokinetics, it has a very poor oral bioavailability of only 57%. Its elimination T half is 4.5 to 9 hours and it's predominantly excreted as sulfate as well as glucuronide conjugates by the UGT enzyme as well as in the liver as well as the kidney and it is excreted in the urine as glucuronide conjugate. And it's not that it is entirely safe in patients who are having renal or hepatic impairment. The thing is, most of the studies that have studied edrovone uh, have not included patients with these issues. So actually, there is no data for patients who are, have renal or hepatic impairment and regarding the do dose adjustments for the same. But however, there are no significant drug reactions. So this is about edrovone and we'll meet in the next drug.